Hi everyone, um, if you don't already know me, my name is Liz um, and it is my honour to welcome you to today's Mustard Seed service video. Today we are moving from the teachings of Jesus, from the Sermon on the Mount to the miracles of Jesus. This week focusing on Jesus calming the storm and next week the miracle of Jesus walking on the water. During our time together, the music team will be leading us in song and Ian will be reading us the passage for today, which Rich will then unpack for us. Then later on, Natalia will be leading us in prayer. As ever, a huge thank you to everyone who makes these videos happen each week. You are all amazing. I don't know about anyone else, but I often find myself thinking that miracles are only ever big, spectacular events that only really happen to the super spiritual and those with impeccable faith and who never doubt. Now, I do believe in the big miracles. I very much believe that God can and does do those incredible overnight, complete transformation and completely bizarre miracles. But I also believe in the smaller, but no less powerful everyday miracles that if we're not looking for, we can very easily miss. I believe that any time a friend makes us smile when we're feeling down, that is a miracle of Jesus. I believe that the smile of a stranger as you pass in a street that touches your heart is a miracle of Jesus. I believe that every time you choose to trust God in the middle of a storm with a faith that feels so fragile, that is a miracle of Jesus. And trust me, no matter how small you may feel your faith is, God can use that to make incredible things happen. And as we heard in the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I pray that as you worship with us today, through the songs, the reading, the teaching and the prayers, you will experience more of God's deep, unconditional love for you. That as you hear about the miracles of Jesus, you will recognise the miracles of Jesus in your own life. And that you would know that you are so very precious. Wider. No love is like your love, love, 
everyone it's so lovely to see you this morning thanks for being with us on youtube i wanted to just tell you about a couple of things before ian brings our very exciting bible reading which i'm really looking forward to speaking about this morning so please do stay tuned in but i just wanted to tell you about advent and the agm firstly advent we're going to have a very special uh, talk series about waiting for jesus and waiting that sort of all of this reminds me of of what we're going through in coronavirus at the moment uh, because it feels like we've entered our advent times where we're uh, waiting for this vaccine which is going to bring us healing and hope and transformation well advent in the church year is about waiting for jesus who's going to bring us healing hope and transformation so we're going to have all of that as part of our talk series linked into that with soul food edinburgh we're going to be doing some uh inspirational stuff day by day and we will give you more information about that uh, uh, nearer to the time and also uh, we're going to as a final thing uh, we're going to say morning prayer together day by day during advent and again i will tell you how you can access all of this this is a time to get close to jesus this is a time to get closer to Jesus, and that's what we're going to be doing in Advent. Then we also have got our AGM coming up very different this year. Uh, because of the virus, we'll have to do it on Zoom. It changes things a bit, and we'll explain that as we go through the next uh, few days or so, so you can get to know what to expect. I do hope you can join us at the AGM though and i want to say it's linked in with another meeting on uh, the 8th of december uh, where which we're going to call a vision uh, meeting this meeting is about 2021 and what we're hoping to do it seems ridiculous to talk about vision at the moment because we we really don't know how 2021 is going to pan out but there's some things in our hearts which we want to just share uh, with you at that meeting so i hope that's a really exciting and uh, and just life-giving uh, meeting so those things are coming up and are going to happen um, so uh, looking forward to seeing you all in a couple of minutes after the fantastic Ian brings us our Bible reading. Mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 41. That day when evening came he said to his disciples let us go over to the other side Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So we've got this brilliant passage of Jesus uh, calming the storm, 
And I would say that 2020 has been rather like a storm. The reality of living through 2020 has, for many of us, been like an emotional stop-start kind of rush hourish kind of year. I was thinking I ought to use that common cliche and say 2020 has been like a roller coaster, but it's not that because at least on a roller coaster you have those brilliant highs and you go wee all the way down because 2020 is more like being in those little cars you have to sit on a roller coaster chugging their way along and there's been nothing more joyful than that uh, going on 2020 has been sort of like this stop start year inch by inch unrelenting uncomfortable joy sapping kind of year uh, it's like you're trying to get through edinburgh at the moment and it's just endless roadworks it's uh, red lights it's ta- those taxi driver maneuvers which they do they decide to do with no indication right in front of you it's sick inducing anger inducing slowness we think we want to do one thing when we when end up having to do something else there's been mainly of hope Many moments, perhaps, of hope for us, times of hope, may, may, but mainly, I think, worry and anxiety have featured this year. I might overstate it, but the way we are living at this time doesn't feel real. I know it is real because we're living through it, but it doesn't feel like life in its fullness. There is more. So I need this Jesus silencing the storm passage because it brings me back to Jesus, completely back to him. It brings me back to the Jesus who can silence the storms. In the passage, he physically works the miracle of telling a life dangering storm to shut up. But in our lives, he becomes the one who can help us get through our storms. Coronavirus times are exactly what Jesus is for. They are times when in partnering with him, we get the resources we need to get us through. That's why we need this passage. What Jesus does physically here is what he does now in our spirits and emotions. Let me explain. Jesus and his disciples are travelling to the other side of the lake. He was on the way to a new territory. He was entering into a new stage of life. And uh, he was on the way to telling this new group of people about the kingdom of God. So this is a really important journey. Mark is using it as a connective between one part of Jesus's ministry to a new part of Jesus's ministry. So something new is going on. And when something new is happening, that's always a bit bumpy and a bit emotional. How's it going to work out? What's going to go on on the other side? And Jesus And his disciples were moving to minister into a new community, the Samaritan community. And Jesus and his disciples, as we know, were Jewish. So this was engaging with a completely new group of people with different world views. And it would have felt a little bit dangerous. It's like a new chapter is starting. Things could definitely go wrong. So stuff was bubbling away under the surface, in their hearts. They were a bit worried and that was a bit scary. But also the water was getting very choppy and the weather was getting awful and it was getting extremely dangerous. So it was worrying and it was scary, even for seasoned uh, fisher people as they were. And what does Jesus do in all of this? I completely love this. He finds a nice cushion and he goes to sleep. Uh, life is about to end. And what does Jesus do? He tucks himself up in bed and is snoring. And Jesus is the exact opposite here of the storm. He is resting. He is peaceful. And just hold that image for a moment. Think about it, because in the chaos, Jesus is in peace. In the chaos, Jesus rests. In the worry, Jesus sleeps. He's right there in the turmoil. He's physically present. Jesus is going through the storm, just like his friends are going uh, through the storm. He's living it with them, but in a different way. I love that uh, line of Jesus when he says, come to me all who are tired, worried, anxious, and I will give you rest. I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but the idea is, come to me, everyone, And I will give you rest because Jesus is the one who is going to ease our pain. He says, I will be your peace. 
Here he is living that out. When we turn to Jesus in our turmoil, he is the peaceful presence offering us another way. Now, despite this, the disciples, I want to use a nice term, but I think this really is the right term. The disciples are pissed off with Jesus completely. How the heck can he sleep when they are going to die? Their leader, the person they follow, should be with them in this. He's letting them down. I don't know, if I'm honest with you, what Jesus could have probably have done in all this. They're the sailing experts. Jesus was just a rabbi. I don't know why they wanted him to be awake, but I wonder if it's something like this. Perhaps they wanted to transfer all of their rubbish and all of their worry and all of their panic onto him. That's the classic human narrative, isn't it? If I'm worried, you need to be worried uh, too. I know I do it to Jenny all the time. Often this is a subconscious thing. Something deep inside of us isn't right. So we've got to give voice to it and we pass it on to others too. If we're having a hard time, it feels like to me, well, the other person should have a hard time too. So into all the chaos, into the human worry and into that nature chaos going on all about them. Jesus speaks and listen to what he says. He goes, silence, quiet, stop, cease, peace. Be still. I'll say it again. Silence. Quiet. Stop. Cease. Peace. Be still. Just imagine Jesus saying that into your anxieties. Silence. Quiet. Stop. Cease. Peace. Be still. These are really beautiful words to be spoken into anxiety because anxiety feels the opposite of that to me. And these are the commands for the miracle. Because as we know, the storm stops, there's calm, there's peace, there's gentleness. These become the new words. I need to say a few words here about fear and anxiety, because the commandment Jesus most often said, I thought it was to love your neighbour and to love your neighbour and uh, uh, to, to love God and to love your neighbour as yourself. I thought the classic commandment was the most important uh, thing that Jesus said and he said it often and it certainly is the most important thing Jesus said but his most important commandment was do not fear. Jesus says so often he says don't fear, he says don't worry, he says it all the time just read through the gospels often it's don't worry about it, don't fear, don't be anxious I was reading the other day and it said, to, the book said, the opposite to fear, to, to love is not hate. The opposite to love is fear. The opposite to love is fear. That's why Jesus speaks about it so often. The things which human beings, uh, sorry, the thing which makes human beings so incomplete and sometimes makes us uh, so uneasy and so not like the people we want to be is our capacity to give in to fear. Our preference is rather like the disciples and to run around in the chaos, filling ourselves with fear and worry and anxiety. And into this, Jesus says, do not fear, cease, stop, be quiet, don't be afraid. He says it so often because he, know, he knows we need to hear it again and again. He wants us to be moved away from a life of being afraid into a life of love. Jesus knows that human beings have two basic emo emotions. They are the emotion of fear and the emotion of love. Jesus is perfect love that drives out all fear. Did you know... That, the that Jesus had a nickname for the disciples. It was Little Faiths. Little Faith, he used to say. Oh, you of little faith, uh, he used to say. And he used to say it to them all the time. In the other passages about this uh, narratives in Matthew and Luke, it's much more obvious. Jesus says, uh, you of little faith. Uh, to them he goes you of little faith you little faith he says he says it that's his nickname little faith uh, uh, and all the time he said it to his disciples little faith I dare say <laughs> if I'm honest it'll probably be his nickname uh, for me little faith Richard someone once said uh, we learn 
to not fear by being an apprentice to Jesus. And being an apprentice to Jesus is saying we want faith and we want Jesus to deal with the anxiety, worry and being afraid aspects of our lives. A sort of a modern psychological way to understand Jesus is Jesus was a non-anxious presence all through the chaos and storm of the passage. Uh, John Mark Comer says uh, uh, this, that this non-anxious presence in this passage can be seen in five ways. Uh, you can see, firstly, in Jesus slowing. Look, he was fast asleep. He was about as slow as you can go. He was fast asleep. Jesus was rarely in a hurry. Uh, Willard said, when we are relaxed, that's when we can be present to God. That's Dallas Willard, by the way, a great person about holiness. He said, when we are relaxed, it means we are present to God. Jesus was rarely in a hurry. He was relaxed and present to God. As you read the Bible story, narrative, Often the best works of Jesus came when he's interrupted. If you interrupt me, that's not the best me you're going to get. But you did for Jesus because he could cope with uh, with, uh, interruptions because he wasn't in a hurry. So he could pause and take time and reflect and deal with people. Jesus dealt with it. For Jesus, hurry and overload are incomparable uh, with love and they're incompatible with love. If hurry and overload are the basis of our worries, what I need to say to you is slow down. The second thing is Jesus lived a Sabbath uh, lifestyle. So he would retreat and then he would return. So he'd go away from the disciples and he would return to them. We see that time and time again. He would withdraw to lonely places and he withdrew so he could be centred on God. And the more public we are, the more time we need to have time away and hide away with God. The busier we are, the more time we need to stop and hide away and live this Sabbath lifestyle with God, because that's what it means. I'm slowing my life to spend time with God. The key thing is for life is finding time to rest with Jesus. And that is a brilliant way to deal with worry. How well we rest will determine how well we work. And if we have no rest, our work will be full of anxiety. If we have no rest, our worries will dominate us. Jesus, says John Mark Comer, the third thing, Jesus lived a life of koinonia, which means communion. He had really good friends, in other words. Peter, James and John were his really close friends And friendships were based on the good news. They were committed friendships. They were gospel friendships where people were committed to one another. And they became gospel friendships because out of them, the secrets to life were grappled with. In other words, these relationships helped uh, all of the disciples and Jesus meet with God. These were deep, long relationships. They weren't rushed. They were fantastic places where in safety uh, they uh, laughed together. They laughed through their worries probably. They said, oh, I found it really hard today. And everyone goes, yeah, that was hard, wasn't it? I didn't know when that man went went mad with us before you healed him, Jesus. I thought we were going to get harmed and it wasn't that scary. And then they could laugh about it and they could put their worries in the right place. And that's what friendships, deep communion friendships do. They put things into the right place. The other thing that Jesus did was he lived out a contemplative prayer. His whole life was a prayer, really. He had a deep connection with God. And that was what Jesus, the way Jesus worked it out, connecting with God. His relationship with his father, God, was everything. And that for us is everything. Finding a way to pray and finding those deep prayers is the antidote to chaos. It's a way to help us deeply connect to to God. At the vision meeting on the 8th, I'll be talking more about this. And my hope is that we become as a community, mustard seed community, more connected in 2021 with the 24-7 prayer movement so we can make contemplation, prayer, deep prayer, the centre of us all. 
And the final thing, fifth thing to say, which John Mark Comer says, is Jesus dealt with this with indifference. He wasn't bothered by the storm, in other words. And the way Jesus deals with chaos is he's indifferent with us. In other words, uh, Jesus had a freedom he, and that was born because he was deeply connected to God. Somebody calls that a surrendered life to God. And, and so he became indifferent to all the problems and the chaos and all the bits and pieces, which many worry about. And he put them in their place and didn't let them dominate uh, his life. And as we pursue the kingdom and discover we are, in fact, living in the kingdom of God, that freedom in us hopefully grows and grows and we learn to deal with all of this. Okay, I hope that sort of segue uh, was helpful. Uh, But one thing to notice as I prepare uh, to finish here, uh, notice that Jesus doesn't say here what Jesus doesn't say here. Notice that his teaching uh, doesn't say this uh, uh, and doesn't point uh, his disciples to this. Jesus doesn't say, don't worry, God's in control of everything. I don't know how many of you have been going through a crisis and somebody says, oh, don't worry, God's in control of it. I think I might have said that a few times and I apologise if I did. Jesus never said, don't worry, God's in control. We see that in his life because eventually everything went completely wrong for him he ended up dying you know that's not Jesus's narrative you're having a hard chaotic time and Jesus in control of it and will sort it out as his uh, uh, followers note not all problems can be sorted a fact of being human is we will have problems not all of our problems can be solved but as we face our problems as we follow Jesus as we chase the kingdom of God, as we pursue deepness with God, we do so knowing that our anxiety and worry are the things that Jesus loves dealing with. He is why, it's why he's with us. He is this non-anxious presence for our lives, pointing us towards peace, shalom, faith, hope and love. And that's our invitation today. To make sense of our worries, you could say to make sense of these coronavirus times we're living through, this hard to navigate world, to make, that's the invitation in this world we're in, to know that he's in our boats, to know that he's in our hearts, in our lives. And he's that peaceful, hopeful presence, inviting us to move from being little faiths, like his disciples were, to those of have faiths. So let's be silent for a moment. Jesus is with us. Whatever our emotions are today, whatever this world is doing, Jesus is our non-anxious, peaceful presence. And he is about us. And what he does is he brings hope. Let's, if you like, draw close to him as he's sleeping on his cushion on the boat. Let's imagine him sleeping on a cushion as we travel through our storms in life. Let's trust him that somehow his presence is more than enough. Amen.
pedidra sosht, es carpiador, mini kinyor, la chuchaba, certa chelo, sto chuchulani, sin chuchulani, sin chuchulani. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Let us pray. Call me, Lord, as you calm the storm. Tell me, Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. Call me, Lord, as you calmed the storm. Still me, Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Lord, enfold me in your peace. Let's take a few moments in silence to ask God to give us his calm and his peace.
creator of heaven and earth, the water and everything in them, loving giver of life, breath, and goodness. We give you thanks for your amazing love to us. Thank you for your protection, your provision, and your providence in our lives. As we think about this week, we pray that you would bring to our minds the times when we were closest to you, the times when you protected us, when you provided for us, when we experienced a bit of your love, joy, and care. We thank you for your love. Let's spend a moment thinking about this past week, about the times when we experience closeness with God, joy in nature, closeness with family or friends, our needs met or unexpected blessings. Father, we acknowledge that these are dark and difficult times. We also acknowledge that you are in the boat with us, in the middle of the storm. We come to you with our worries, fears, disappointment, and grief. We thank you that you welcome us as we are. We pray that you will grant us more faith to trust you. Let's spend a moment bringing to God our heart, our aches, grief, anxiety, worries, our anger and our disappointments. God is big enough to hold us. Finally, our sweet Savior, grant us the grace to seek your face expectantly this week. Replenish our reserves, for the road is long. Remind us that if you are with us, there is nothing to be afraid of. No matter how small our boats or how big the storm. Support us in the coming days where glimpses of your goodness, hints of your joy, and a song of hope in these very strange times. Amen. Thank you for joining us and worshipping with us today. I do hope that you found today's service helpful. As usual, we are meeting tonight on Zoom at 6 p.m. Uh, to catch up with one another, um, and the link for that can be found in today's Sunday email. As we look to the rest of the week, um, our usual Tuesday prayers are being postponed this week, but please do get in touch if we can pray for you. And I do encourage us all to pray for one another from home. Alpha will be happening on Wednesday evening, um, and I'll be in touch with, our, for, with everyone who's involved in that sometime this week. A reminder that the AGM is being held on Tuesday 24th at 7.30 on Zoom. If you are not yet a member of Mustard Seed and would like to become one, um, please get in touch with me and I'll send you a membership form. If you're not sure if you're a member, just get in touch and we'll let you know. Um, and if you could also let me know if you're planning on attending the AGM, that would be great. Thank you. As we end our time together today, I'd love for us to say a prayer together from the Letio 365 app. So please pray with me. Loving God, I receive your love for me. Send me out to love the world for you. Jesus Christ, I believe you live in me. 
sends me out to show the world it's true. Holy Spirit, I perceive your presence in my life. Send me out to serve the world with you. Wherever you find yourself this week, be it on the top of a mountain or walking on water or in the midst of a storm, please know that Jesus is right there with you in it. And know that you are deeply, deeply loved. Amen. Oh,